back. It's his Warts Friday vlog. Now, if you're tuned in for the film, which is South Surrey Abandoned Railway Junction, yeah. So if you filmed in to watch the South Surrey Junction Railway film, <laughs> five stars. Well, I'll get into gear in a minute, don't worry. Uh, just jump forward 20 minutes anyway, and you'll see that. The rest of us are going to enjoy listening to the comments by you guys. It's all sent in by you guys. Thanks for that. Right. So, matters are rising. Two films to consider. First one is uh, The Ash Church to Malvern, Abandoned Railway, which went out two weeks ago. Uh, Marilyn kicks us off. Ash Church is a great spot if you were lucky enough to have a steam train going through as there's such a long straight line of vision each way. That's so true Marilyn, I've never really thought of that. But yeah, it must be a mile of straight track either side of the uh, station. Wonderful place to go viewing trains and as you say, especially um, a steam train, wow, a full, full tilt, that be good. She said, I did have to quickly set up my side-by-side -side maps when you started, but have suddenly realised I could pause you so I did, and left you standing there for a couple of moments. I wondered who did that. I was standing there wondering what was going on all the time. It was Marilyn. <laughs> well done, Marilyn. Peter Smith says it's a trip down memory lane for him. He says, is it just me? Do I get a little bit teary at the sight of some of those well-preserved blue engineering bricks, which look as if they were only laid yesterday? I know just what you mean. You see a magnificent old structure, you're bound to start thinking about the people that built it. Yeah, all those years ago. Wonderful, wonderful craftsmen. I wonder what their lives were like. Trev. Now our Trev's excelled himself once again, once again. If you've any interest in visiting any part of this railway or in the railway itself, you have to read Trev's notes. He's really done a tour de force on that. That's brilliant. Uh, so if you want to visit any part of it, if you go to Trev's notes and read through there, you'll understand what you're looking at and what, what happened there early, early on in the century. Brilliant work from uh, Trev. Thank you very much, Trev. Malcolm. Malcolm Richardson said it was a leisurely video. Rather like the railway journey must have been, judging by the old photograph of a train on the bridge over the Severn. Yeah, it would have been a lovely uh, journey. A lot of it running up alongside the Severn as well. Yeah, and over it as what have you. Abandoned Railways, our Ron, who's uh, been out looking around at places that he can film and trying to find some which are dry enough to go and have a look at. It's hard work. Anyway, Ron's up in the Cotswolds. He enjoyed the matters arising. And then the Ash Church to Marlborough and explore with plenty of finds on the route and some fine music to accompany us on the journey. Yeah, well done, Ron. Lionel and Mary Travels. Well, Lionel hasn't been out uh, very much just lately, you may have noticed, because of all this uh, wet, horrible weather. He said it was an interesting walk, this time on a decent path, without too many brambles and trees to negotiate. Yeah, he <laughs> spotted that. Oh, Ron's the one for brambles and trees and goodness knows what. How he ploughs up those trap beds, I do not know. <laughs> but yes, a tree to walk on a decent path for a change. Christina, how splendid the view from the windows would have been. Great choice of music. Yes, and again, uh, somebody else appreciates the, the, uh, the, the tourist attraction of a route like that. Brilliant. Yeah, and she says, oh... By the way, nice hat. <laughs> Donny says he's been fascinated by the concentration of civil engineering in this area since childhood. The A38 southbound out of Worcester during the 60s and 70s was our route to many adventures, both great and small, before Dad had a car robust enough to handle the pace of the newly completed M5. <laughs> yeah, I had a car like that. Actually, I had several. <laughs> oh dear. He says, Donnie says, 
How quickly all the engineering gets reclaimed by nature in such beautiful countryside, yeah. If I get given the choice in future lifetimes, I'm sure I will choose South Worcestershire all over again. Wow. Yeah, well, let's hope you don't have to make that decision too soon, Donny. David, David from Spain. Good old David. He got schools out in a moment and he's on his travels deep into the countryside where the best mountain ham grows on trees. You have to read it to understand it. Lots of detail along the way. He said, what he liked most about the route was that although parts of it have been obliterated, you always seem to be in view of the continuation. Yeah, so this section had gone, but you could see the next bit just up there. Yeah, true, David. Sam, great entertainment again, he says. I started watching your videos whilst getting over a hip operation. Help pass the time. Great stuff, Sam, and you're with us now. Stay with us, buddy. Nice to have you on board. Michael from Poland, greeting from a very spring-like Poland. Yeah, we've got all the daffodils out at the moment. Just looking around the place, brightening it all up. Brilliant stuff, isn't it? Very good. You love the video, and it's nice to revisit one of the old adventures. Yeah, but of course that's what film clubs morphed into now. It used to be for showing films which perhaps hadn't quite made the grade into a full-blown film. Uh, but I've got no of that left now. So now I tend to use it as an archive out of the... Um, the old main catalogue there, so that we can get some time. I'm rambling now, aren't I? I've lost the plot. <laughs> yes, it's archive material that uh, probably hasn't been shown for the last two or three years. Yeah, that'll do. Moving swiftly on, Pete Payne said it was an enjoyable explorer. He's just about to say, take Sid out for his morning walk in the rain. Needless to say, he's much more enthusiastic than me. <laughs> Poor old dog. And Sid. <laughs> James. James Weeks, Canada. Where's Sumac, James? We're, we're uh, morning, Sumac. Oh, we're getting a mention down here. All right. Su James here is off to Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where the grumpy old men come from, our gym. He's off to Tennessee with the rowing team for a week of spring training. Wow. I admit I'll miss you know who. And she'll likely find several spherical objects in my luggage on my return. But I'm really looking forward to the 14-hour bus trip with 50 teenage boys very well behaved in the seats behind me. <laughs> you, are, you can hope, James. You can hope. But I don't know really that much hope at all. Very well. Brenty. Thanks for bringing the English countryside to life. For those of us who can't get there right now, Brenty, my pleasure. Come on along. Right, last week's film was filmed not too far from where we are now on a Victorian causeway. Uh, that really, as we'll see, not many people realise it is a causeway, but it was built by the Victorians. It's taken a battering for the last, getting on for 200 years, and it's still doing the job magnificently well. Anyway. Peter Smith again then says, All the years I've driven along that stretch, I've never heard it referred to as a causeway, but on reflection, of course, yeah. And then um, Peter goes on to remind us, I expect you have heard of the mystery there in the 1930s, where a torso was discovered up by the bridge. Ooh, spooky stuff. Um, I don't know that they ever identified whose torso it was, and they certainly didn't uh, get to the perpetrator. Yes, we've got our local mystery up here. I expect she walks up and she or he walks up and down with her head tucked underneath her arm. I'm, nice. I'm sure that hasn't been uh, rumoured around here. Marilyn. Ah, yes, Marilyn. Went to Liverpool Lime Street today and once again marvelled at the last mile of cuttings and tunnels down from the original... Edge Hill Station, which appears to be hewn out of solid rock. Yeah, I know the piece you mean. Amazing railway builders. There has to be a preservation order on that, surely, doesn't it? Well, it's such a feat of engineering. Solid rock, and it's been cut out quite deep, too. Yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. You've all seen the pictures. Brilliant stuff. Malcolm Richardson. 
He said it vividly conveys the immense force of the floodwaters and why for some it's an increasing nightmare with our wetter winters. Without those flooded fields, where would all that water go? Yeah, well, without the flooded fields, it would go on downstream. And I think perhaps uh, what's happened upstream from here explains some of that. Because uh, people upstream from here have been putting in a lot of flood defences. So where the water used to spread out over their land, it doesn't anymore. It comes down here and uh, spreads over here. And if we were to do the same, put some um, uh, flood defences in, some more flood defences in, then of course all that volume of water would go on farther down river and flood somebody else. Difficult problem. Difficult problem, I would say. Oh, oh yes, Christina. I'm supposed to be looking up some music if you aren't I, Christina. I will get there. Trev. There are no railways here, but Trev's still done a sterling job explaining what he knows about the, uh, the causeway and what have you. And he has lived by the Severn and the Wye rivers for many years, but he never ceased to be astounded at the speed by which the river can rise and fall when there has been a significant and prolonged rainfall. Yeah, it comes up pretty damn quick. But our, the floods around here are mainly controlled by what happens in mid Wales because that's where the source of the river is. Um, mm. And the, the water gathers up there and then comes rushing down here. So yeah, it does go a bit quick. The causeway, Trev says, is a magnificent piece of Victorian engineering, of course. And the way in which the culverts and bridges survive, despite constant battering of the river, speaks for itself. As far as I know, it's never had to have any remedial work done on it. I mean, to the road surface, of course, that wears out. But the causeway itself, with all that immense force of water, has never had to have any remedial work done on it. So the Victorians knew what they were doing. Uh, and Trev, of course, being uh, a pilot who flies around here annoying us all, but never mind, we'll forgive you for that, Trev. Uh, but Trev, of course, gets a bird's eye view of all the floods and uh, realises how immense they are. And he reflects that it's a little bit like when we had foot and mouth uh, around here. And he says, whichever way you looked in any direction, there was the unrelenting smoke from the funeral pyres of slaughtered cattle. Mm. They were sad times, weren't they? Pete Payne thought it was quite interesting. He said, that's a lot of water. Yeah, isn't it just? Does it flood most years? Well, here's the thing. It didn't used to, but it does now, and several times a year. And uh, we're putting that down to our friend climate change, I'm afraid. Pardon me. David from Spain. So that's a huge volume of water and very fast flowing as well. He said, am I right in thinking your house is well above the flood plain and it would have to be an exceptional biblical flood to get to you. Yeah, we're quite a way up, I suppose. So I always say if we get flooded, the rest of Gloucestershire is in real trouble. <laughs> yes, he, and David goes on to say, dealing with the effects of flood damage is not much fun. My near neighbours had their ground floor was flooded out. I helped them with, with the cleaning up process. The water is not difficult, but the mud is another story. Yeah, um, that's what we hear. Uh, the smell is awful uh, when you've had uh, muddy water uh, with various things uh, in it, which we won't mention, go through your house. Terrible. Yeah, you have to feel for people. You really do. <laughs> he says, I joked with Paul yesterday, I might be late this morning, as I would be building a snowman. Yes, David was expecting uh, a great pile of snow. Uh, he told Paul, and Paul, to his credit, let me know so that uh, I wouldn't worry that David had gone astray. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, the Parkinson's Wars family in operation. We're all looking after each other here. Yeah, lovely. Donny, he said, another hidden gem of civil engineering that nobody gives a second glance. No, true. The Victorian certainly built to last when you compare the volume of horse and cart traffic then to what it handles today. Yeah, uh, 
I don't think the width had ever been adjusted. It was always that wide, I think, uh, because you wanted horse and carts or oxen carts passing each other. So that stayed more or less uh, the same. But uh, yeah, I think had they realised that we would get climate change, they might have built it a bit taller, a bit higher. But uh, it's done the job pretty well, I would say. Yeah, well done. Engage on a shelf. Ah, Simon, now, oh, right. This is interesting. Uh, obviously, Simon's been in the telecoms industry uh, most of his working life, if not all of it. And he says, I remember as an apprentice 42 years ago. Wow, no secrets there, Simon. Trying to get to someone's house to fix their phone and not being able to get anywhere near it due to the floods. In the end, we hitched a ride on a tractor with a ladder and tools and wire to do the job. That dedication, isn't it? Uh, blimey, can you imagine? Stick your ladder down in the water and off you go. I go, oh dearie me. Can you imagine what they'd be doing that today? Health and safety would have an absolute fit, I would think. If you say, we're just going to borrow his tractor and pop down here and fix his wire. Yeah, blimey. Lionel. He said, I thought we had... We had flooding, but that tops anything we have round here. <laughs> the water table was very high and still rising. I measure the rainfall each year. Do you, Lionel? That's interesting. So I knew what we had in store for this winter. Ah, yeah, I, I can well imagine. Well done, Lionel. I run then up in the Cotswolds, abandoned railways, spectacular scenes. Those bridge structures have certainly got their work cut out. Wonderful Victorian uh, engineering as always. And I thought it was wet up here, Ron said. <laughs> Michael from Spain. Greetings from a very sunny spring Friday morning in Poland with no floods. What a sight, he says. My first thought was why Turley was inhabited where it is when it's always known to flood. Well, of course, as we say, there's a we're on higher ground here and a lot of the dwellings would have been built up here. But Turley started its life looking after the passing trade because there was a ferry initially across the Severn there. So people had to queue up to catch the ferry. Uh, and um, as a consequence, Turley was built to service that industry. And at one time, there were seven pubs in the village. I mean, it's not that big, seven pubs. I suppose that's for overnight stays and refreshing your horses and doing all the rest of it. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Right. West Country Wanderings, our Paul. Excuse me. He says, what would we do without our Victorian engineers? What indeed? Can you imagine how long and how much that would take to co and cost to build today? There's another road quite close here, a main major arterial road that floods quite frequently. And uh, I think they've been talking about doing something about that for about the last 20 years. So by now the Victorians would have been in there, fixed it, done it and gone away and done something else. Yeah. Oh, well. Paul says, I bet most motorists who drive over it, completely unaware of what they're driving over, what allows them to drive un unimpeded across flooded land. Well, yeah, you, you, it's not like you stand back and see the course where you're actually on it. So, yeah, yeah, see where you're coming from. Jim, Jim finishes us off this week. And Jim says, it certainly looked a bit damp there, Ron. <laughs> well, you could say it was a bit damp, yes. But, uh, Jim says, we could do with some rain here. So perhaps you can pass the next lot on. It's months since we've had any measurable rainfall. That's New Zealand. Wow. Of course, they've just been through the summer. Coming up to winter now, so perhaps you'll get some rain, Jim. Hope so, anyway. Right, now, coming up in a few minutes from the film archive, it's the South Surrey uh, and the Midland Junction Railway. The abandoned junction railway, South Cerny. We've been down here before, of course, and the beauty of this one is we get to see the Thames and Severn Canal as well. Two for the price of one. Can't be bad. Uh, it's quite a nice walk, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Stick that on in a few minutes. Now, 
Next week. You'll like this one. It's a trip to the forest of Dean, so you're already interested. And we're looking for the old bombdom. During the Second World War, it was the second largest American bomb dump in the country. It was down in the forest of Dean. And we're going to see if we can find any trace. So nice to say, if you might want to bring your virtual tin hat then for next week. But I'll see you down in the forest of Dean with your virtual tin hat. Don't be late. Another Midlands and Southwestern Junction abandoned railway walk. We're just outside South Cerny and we're climbing up the rampart to a very large bridge. Midland Railway Standard, large coping stone, blue engineering brick over the span. If you looked over these ramparts 60 years ago, this is what you might have seen. Or this, which is South Cerny Station. And nowadays, the footpath actually marks the platform edge. Right, let's get on with this walk then. Through there. From here on the path, you can see the Bridge ten spans. I was cutting the supports to lessen weight. Beautiful structure. Not good. And the drain from the roadbed keeps the moisture out of the structure. This, complete with party balloon, is the rail bed, which is why this arch is so tall. This is the second one. Double track. Beautiful alignment of all the arches here. Stepping down and down and down as the bridge goes down. Gentle walk along the platform. And the slope here, believe it or not, is the actual platform edge. The once thriving platform station. Which would put the signal box over there. I will follow the railway on along here. Rather pretty in the sunlight. To here, which is a magnificent brick built culvert over the river's churn, showing the lovely railway plinths. Local residents making the most of a waterside frontage. Here's a lovely contrast look. Brick built bridge down there, original, and the modern equivalent. It takes half the time to build, well, a fraction of the time to build. It doesn't have the same aesthetic appeal. Still double track here by the look of it. Good yard, now a playing field. So out into the country, looking like it uh, went single line here. The owners off to the side here, look, are making the most of their stream. Putting a bridge across, well that must mean there's another culvert here then. Uh, not quite as magnificent a structure as the last one. Wish you'd shut up bird. But effective just the same. Mind you. Looking on the other side, a bit of maintenance wouldn't go amiss. A little ways farther on, 
yet another somewhat muddy culvert, I would have to say, which is overshadowed in the background by that magnificent structure there. Look at that. That's looking towards uh, South Cerny, and that's looking away. This is what's called the Bow Bow Bridge, for some reason. Nobody seems to know why they invested so much time and money on their bridges. It's been suggested that the idea was to spread the weight on poor ground, but I don't think that theory works because it adds weight. Oh, we're glad they did it. Like the other bridge, it's got arches all the way through it. To save a bit on bricks reduce the weight. Same on the other side. Looking on the top, that's looking away from South Cerny. And there in all its glory. Bow Wow Bridge. From the top of the main span, looking over these wonderful blue brick coping stones. You can actually get an impression of a railway. You can imagine the express hurtling down there. We're headed that way. Railway now has become an embankment. Yet another culvert down there. They really had to deal with some marshy land while we're on an embankment, I guess. Just see the water. And at risk to life and limb, that's a culvert itself. And a special treat, they've left us some ballast. Talking of special treats, we leave the railway at this point, which is now on the embankment to our right. From here, with the view of the ballast, you think there's a railway still up there? Then, tra under this thing, an accommodation bridge or tunnel. Across here, to here, New, original, you choose, which brings us out to here, which is no less than the towpath for the Thames and Severn Canal. Two for the price of one. I'll show you on here what the uh, plan is. We started here in South Cerny, going a little way north on the railway, looking at the magnificent bridges and culverts. Then we'll skip across to the Thames and Severn. We'll follow that then all the way down to the southeast, and then we'll leave the Thames and Severn, pop across, start filming the railway on the way back. That's not really a canal film, but I'm sure there's things of interest along here. We'll have a look at as we pass them by. Just there across the field, you can make out the embankment we've just come off for the railway. 
just up there. Some miles from here, in Siddington, the Midland and South Western Junction Railway actually crossed the old canal. Not much water in it here. 1896. Sweep of the canal, turning left. Section here, as you can see, still got water in it, which is good for the old canal. Built in the late 1700s. Railway built mid 1800s. And surprisingly, the railway didn't buy out the canal, which is their normal trick. They left that for the Great Western to do. Feature of the Thames and Severn Canal Cotswood Stone Wall on the side of the towpath. Built to stop your horse deciding to zoom off into the field to get some grass. Um, a somewhat battered old sign. We're standing by the side of the first of the locks that we're coming across. Well, that's a slightly better soundtrack than I've been getting so far on this walk. Well, rather like the railway, isn't it, really? A beautiful walk for a nice green tunnel. Early spring. Well, it's not actually, it's late spring now, isn't it? We're into May, folks. We're into May. All the while with our old friend, the Canal for Company. And they've had to resort to an embankment along here as well. I often have wandered in deep contemplation it seems that the mind number two. runs wild when you're all alone The way that it could be The ways that it should be Things i do differently If I could do them again I've always loved springtime the passing of winter, the green of the new leaves, and life going on, the promise of morning, long days of summer. And that's the approach to what once was a bridge. All that's left now is that rather sorry pile of bricks. Just an old cowboy from high Colorado Too old to ride anymore, too blind to see I sleep in the city now, away from my mountains Away from the cabin we always I dreamed I left there on an old Palomino, whispering Jesse rode right by my side. I longed to hold her, to hear her soft breathing, the touch of her cool. Whispering Jesse still rides in the mountain, still sings in the canyon, still lives in my heart. This was seen here in the early nineteen hundreds. Different house, of course, in the same location. 
brake strips here under the bridge give your horse some traction but I'm not entirely sure how you got him up there Right, under Spine Road in this direction, which is the main road down through the gravel pits. Halfway house. First time this year. Coat off. Beautiful day. Ideal for looking at railways, canals and the like. There's a culvert, Thames in Severn style. Compare that to the railway. Each to their own. And here's another speciality of the Thames in Severn around Lockkeeper's House. the lock paddle machinery. That's a big lock. That'll be us. I don't think the railway was here then. And now we start to climb, which is a good sign. And there's a familiar parapet up ahead. It does actually look like we're on track. Doubtful there for a while. Because of this, which is a new construction and looked for all the world as if they'd taken down the old bridge and put that up in its place. Because looking down there, looks like railway. Even that does slightly. Good, right, onward. That's more like it. Have to go look over the other side of course. Perfect. No, that's what you call a coping stone. Wow. The bridge is actually closed to traffic. For reasons that we may find in a moment. But before then, this is where it gets tricky. At the end of the bridge turn left. Down the stone track. Looks good so far. Uh, not so good since I forgot my walking boots. Left again through the hole in the hedge. Right. Ah, 
that's so far so good. And then left again on what should be the railway. Ah, oh, looks good to me. Which will eventually bring us back to here, which is the bridge we just crossed. I have to say it does look as if the footpath is on a different alignment to the railway. Looking through the arch. And the reason for closing the bridge to traffic becomes evident. That is probably more the result of poor or no maintenance than it is a building in the first place. Although the problem's pretty universal on this on this bridge. Could be a bad batch of bricks, I guess. I'm going for bad maintenance. There's no problems with any of the other ones. A measly nine archer, this one. Or the others are ten. Our path takes us up there now, past all the may blossom. Dodging puddles as we go. Well, a cutting of sorts. Bit of a poor excuse for one, really. A couple of feet. I'd be very surprised if this was here in the days of the railway. A steep humpback bridge. And the reason for the false bridge back there becomes plain now. And this bridge is here as a tunnel for the conveyor. Over to here. Gravel extraction. That's noisier than the train. that one. One more mile. We could do it. I'm not sure if this will come out or not. There's a field gate there and then cross the railway and there's a field gate there and this would have been a four-way system. There would have been gates which closed across the railway that way and of course the other way they would have prevented cattle from roaming up and down the railway. Always a good idea. Still a beautiful day. Have a job to beat this, wouldn't you? As a pursuit on a sunny day. Nice level walking. Beautiful countryside. Pity about the noise. This noisy lot. Actually, you might not hear anything on the edit. Another one of these. And so called civilization. Some more belated maintenance. Now, this one, despite the traffic, we can actually do a full pan. We get to see all ten spans. Look at that. And the brackets there still in place. One with half an insulator on. It took the signal wires. You have to think in the short term a level crossing would have been cheaper. With long term, with staff costs, who knows? That's where we've come from. That's where we're heading to. A bit more gloop. Private. 
exclusive canal side residence. Not bad. In case you're interested. And the railway continues across there and we now turn left back to the car. They have provided a path. Which is very useful because it brings us back here to the trailhead. But when I think of 